here we are. So um, Hero's Journey, and um, and so this is kind of the model of the Hero's Journey. If you've never heard of it before, I really encourage you to check this out. Um, and just the, the model, uh, Joseph Campbell wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, um, talks about how every individual kind of goes through this archetypical journey. And, and um, it's really an amazing model for storytelling and for telling your story. And so what we're basically aiming to do is um, develop an interactive video platform that's designed to preserve your wisdom for future generations with AI and machine learning. And, um, and yeah, so this is a interesting statement. Every time a person dies, a library burns. Um, and so basically, you know, it's like, how can we capture those stories and preserve that wisdom and work with technology um, and, 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 and utilize this idea of singularity for the benefit of humanity rather than the, uh, the, 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 the darker idea that people think that AI is gonna take over the world. What if we could utilize AI to actually like preserve the, the wisdom of our, an of our living ancestors while they're still here, right? So this was our call to inventure um, as a team. Uh, there's an aging population that wants to be remembered, you know, and with the, um, you know, with COVID-19 and these, you know, pandemics, it's like, whoa, like who knows, like in, in, in one week, an entire generation, uh, the hard drive of, an, of, of, a, of a community could be deleted instantly. And, um, and you know, we have this, uh, this desire and this need to preserve the culture and wisdom and and also now we have the technology to be able to preserve that wisdom um anything that you want to tap into or chime in here michelle nope so i'm going to just skim through this you guys and really what we're looking for is feedback and ideas and anyone that you know is, is passionate about this stuff because we really want to to build a movement here, you know, we're exploring like, is this something that we should make like an open source technology, um, you know, and, and really just open to, to ideas. So we're building a social wisdom video network built for preserving wisdom of elders, creators, communities, groups, friends, to create history together. So basically imagine um, being able to uh, pull out your phone and uh, have unique questions that are based on the hero's journey, based on unique questions that you would never really, you know, like uh, be asked by your family members. Um, and, and just have in your pocket this, this reminder that says, hey, what was, what was the first time that you fell in love? Share that story, you know, or what is, what is the purpose of life? If, you know, these deeper, more meaningful questions. Um, and, and giving the individual the opportunity to pull out their phone and we have the technology to now be able to just like, you know, anyone in the palm of their hand can capture their messages. So, yeah, and just to tap in there a little bit with another example is can you imagine your great, 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 great grandchildren that will never get a chance to meet you to be able to, to find your little avatar and ask you, how did you, you meet our great, 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 great grandfather? Like, how did you guys meet? And it'll be a really beautiful way to preserve your knowledge. And pass that on. Amazing. Yeah, and I mean, think about your grandparents. You know, like you, you know who your grandparents were. Maybe you, know, maybe you didn't know them, but, um, you know, we are a reflection of our ancestors, right? Where we are a, a combination of our mother and father, and then our grandparents gave us some of their habits and their features and their behaviors, you know, and whether we're conscious of it or not, we are a combination of, of them. And so how cool would it be to be able in the future, future generations, to, to be able to pull out their phone and say, hey, grandma, how are you doing today? And then grandma is able to answer back. Oh, doing great. How are you, sweetheart? And, and, and you know, this is now this is just fun. I mean, this is just a fun idea. Right, um, and, and we want to get more into the technology, but this is you know this is not something that's going to be a, a project that's going to happen overnight, but rather this is a, a trend that is occurring, a great revolution that's happening in the uh, in the the awakening of technology and the awakening of consciousness. We now have this ability 
um, and, 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 and also the market demand, you know, the rise in social video, um, TikTok, you know, I, I, I tried it out a couple times. I was like, I'm not getting into this, but now it's blowing up. You know, who would have thought that you could just get so many followers for just dancing in front of a camera for 15 seconds. Um, <laughs> um, and, and then, you know, 1.7 billion uh, used stories on a daily basis. 50% of users contribute original content on social video uh, only on TikTok. Um, so these are these are huge numbers. The, this is, these are huge trends. And what's what's interesting to think about is that there is a trend now towards in, uh, social video, where even our you know people of all ages, people of of all generations, even on this call right now, we have people who are different age ranges and around the world. And here we are, um, uh, you know effectively being able to communicate using our phone we're used to it it's you know with an older generation if we were to say hey grandpa you know tell your story into this phone they would have thought we were crazy but now there is this entirely new generation where they are going they are affluent users of smartphone technology and so this is something that could have not really happened before like maybe on a on a smaller scale but this is something that socially it's more acceptable now um, adults and elders are, are more uh, accustomed to pulling out their phone and talking uh, into a phone. So preserve your stories and memories. Um, so we're going to be talking about the solution that we're, that we're envisioning right now. And I'll just kind of skim through these. Um, so guided questions to help you share important stories. Easily organize and store your memories in your memory vault and share your memory vault with friends and family. So this is essentially something that you'll be able to, you know, pass yeah. on to future generations. Did someone say, share something? Oh, gosh. No. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Jonathan. I'm muting myself. I'm muting myself. Jonathan, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to chime in on a couple things just because uh, um, I think you're hitting the right thing. So, for instance, uh, I actually am in a, uh, work with the most prominent AI experts in the world, as Amazing. well as, as being an AI expert. Um, but Ray Kurzweil, who created the singularity, uh, would very much love this. So I'll share this with, with him. Because our whole thing, and the whole thing about the avatars, is about uh, that, that to preserve you when you go to singularity it's not about the machine taking over it's about you being in partnership with the machine um as for as for this this has actually been a, a passion of mine because uh i my mother is quite, quite old um and uh preserving her i've been shooting her on video now for years just amazing just, but like tony robbins who's also part of my company he has an ai version of himself coming out soon so AI developed to the point to do a lot of the things that you're saying. So you, you can take your grandma, you can take these videos, it can learn her idioms, learn the way she talks. So it could then uh, 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 do a lot of what you're saying. So uh, a lot of what you're saying is not science fiction. There are different people doing different things, not doing your exact application, but, but your, your approach is, is the correct one. You are a legend. Thank you so much for sharing that, Harry. I'm so, your, your mom must be so happy that you're, you know, helping her share her story. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times, like I, I've had the, I used to have run a production company and I, I thought, you know, someone needs to just make a dedicated company that's designed to interview the elders because they have these amazing stories and they probably wish that they could tell them to someone and wish that someone would care enough to like actually in interview them because you know they we need to honor them in that way and i think that that's one of our responsibilities as the youth is to honor our elders by talking story and listening to them share their stories and that's one of the, the greatest gifts that we can give to our parents and to our grandparents while they're alive um and and so this is just taking it to the next level grandma because um, <laughs> we want you here with us for for all time you know i want to i want to show my great great grandchildren uh your story and so so yeah imagine being able to um open your phone and and begin the journey of programming your digital living avatar 
to be preserved for future generations. And the only way, the only thing that you need to do to program this technology is literally share your story and, and share your heart with the camera. Um, the more stories you share, the more intelligent your avatar becomes. And then your family can ask your avatar questions and our AI technology answers the questions based on videos you recorded. Now, obviously this is like the big dream. This is the unique, the USP, the unique selling point proposition that you that makes this unique to anything that's out there right now is that other companies are doing similar types of stuff to this they're saying hey we want to be a memory vault we want to help you preserve your your stories and your videos and we want to save your passwords and your favorite articles and your favorite music and your audios there's even a company that's um like uh, creating an app like siri where they actually interview you and they record your voice and then you can talk to it like Siri, using Siri technology, using your Apple um, uh, TV or, or whatnot. Um, you can a ask and interact with the voice, but, um, but what this is unique is that we're doing video and audio and the idea and the vision is to actually be able to see a live video of grandma smiling and looking into the camera and just breathing. And then you could say, hey grandma, how are you doing today? And there's certain conversational, you know, cues that grandma will have pre-recorded that, you know, so it's like you can almost interact with her, but then you have your list of questions um, that, that, you, that you know are right there that you can click on the question and, and grandma will be able to answer that question. Wow. So now going into, um, Vishal, do you have anything that you want to say? No, it's brilliant. Cool, cool, cool. So with education, this is the big thing. Now, my, my mom was a director in television when I was a kid, and I grew up in the newsroom pretending to be an anchor, and you know, I learned all about lighting and sound and framing, and I also learned about how to give a compelling interview and also how to interview someone. And this is something that has just been built into me for my whole life, and that's why I had a production company for many years. And so that's something that, that is unique to our platform is that we're gonna actually train grandma and grandpa on you know how to share their story in a compelling way and 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 how to prepare themselves for certain questions and you know certain questions that are really important might even come with a video that explains to them like the importance and the meaning of this story you know and 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 really kind of like uh, in inspiring them to share their story and and to get really clear on what they want to share um, so we want to provide them with training and education. And then lastly, we want to um, create a community of wisdom keepers. So, you know, imagine being able to see a world map of, and then have these little illuminated points on the planet where there's wisdom keepers who have shared their stories and you can explore the world of wisdom and actually interact with, uh, with these people from around the world. And, um, and then, yeah, there's a few different um, key points here. Vishal, do you want to uh, go through these? sure if you can see my screen very well. Yeah, no, I see the screen. I'm just wondering how to talk through them. Cool. So. I mean, I can, I can keep going. I know you just got out of another work. He, he just led an entirely another workshop and I've been like putting my mind deep into this. So I, I can go, I can breeze through this and then, and then you can, you can facilitate the after party. Cool. Um, so yeah, so you get you guys get the idea here. So you can leave a, a message for a predetermined date in the future, like in a, an event um, or a holiday, weddings, graduations. Um, imagine spreading your mother's your your mother's ashes at her favorite tree, and then whenever you get to that tree, you you pull out your phone and you unlock a specific message that she recorded at that tree. How beautiful would that be? Um, social messages, a bon voyage to the world, very important people in your life, specific people. And then there's the conversational AI messages that are basically common questions that people might ask that, you know, based on, you know, you get to pr program your uh, avatar and basically just answer questions that are common questions. And, and so that just gives your uh, digital avatar more, uh, more uh, uh, well-rounded uh, lexicon of, of conversational AI. 
So this is a new frontier. Currently, there are no companies pursu pursuing the preservation of human wisdom through the creation of an interactive video platform that leverage AI and machine learning to create a digital human avatar. This is a huge market. We won't get into the business stuff too much because we want to open up um, the conversation. We've done some market research and really asked people, you know, like, um, do you think it's important uh, to document memories of our li living elders? 94% say yes, absolutely. 94% um, of people say that, do you wish that you would have documented more of your grandparents or your loved ones stories before they passed away? 94% said yes. And then we also asked if people would use this type of app. And we had 78 per people say, percent of people say yes. We also, this, this was a random sample. We're still kind of getting clear on who is that, you know, who's that uh, target person? We, you know, who's the target audience of this type of technology? And one of the questions that we actually asked in the survey was, at what age do you think it's important for people to start sharing their story? And so that was another um, question. So I will end it there. And um, this is our, our, our team right now, me and Vishal and Rohit, he's an AI uh, engineer. And that's a wrap. And then I just want to open it up uh, for QA and ideas. Any feedback? Because that's really what we're looking for right now. I love how real this presentation is. I see decks all the time. And it's so often it feels like a dream. And there's something about this deck that feels very tangible and real. Like it's, it's a real project, it's a real company. It's really coming. So I appreciate the reality that you created in this and it feels right. This is, this is actually a really, um, really great uh, thing to start doing already because it feels like I, I talk with my grandma and she has so much to tell, but she's like, every time I'm asking her, she's like, why are you asking me? What's, what, is, what is interesting about this? Like, who wants to listen to this? I'm like, no, you don't understand. It's like completely different situation. She was born during the Second World War. She was growing during this time. Uh, like, she had all these crazy stories how her house was burned because her father was in different political party from all the community and all this crazy stuff. I'm like, how? It, of course it's interesting but the thing is the new generation the new generation they not that much interested in this because no one talks about this and it's not a hype it's not on the tv it's not in our instagram and all this stuff you know and if we can uh if we find a way to make it interesting for them through new technology through uh, design and all this stuff, it would be so m meaningful, it would be so important. It's, it's so much knowledge that gets lost into this fal falsification of history. Like through listening, my grandma, I know better version of the history that I learned in my school, uh, what actually was happening, how people would be forced uh, from countries to make this um, um, uh, to make the whole new structure or from uh, agrarians to um, like, I, I forgot the word on English, convention, no, uh, industrial, uh, to industrial uh, country. And that was, of course, now we understand that was a mistake, but in history, it's like, it gives you like cold facts and you don't know real history. So I'm so into this, into this idea. Thank you guys for doing this. That was a great perspective, Paul. The, the whole point, I think, of your system is what, is it Nika? Yeah. Uh, it is the fact that every generation has a different viewpoint and a different experience base. And uh, how they're going to look at a situation is different and usually much smarter than the way a younger generation looks at it. <laughs> no, that's true. But the, the, uh, database for which they can judge now offered by government and chosen by government what we will teach them in schools right we have programs and they can program our kids 
when instead we can uh, create decentralized knowledge for this through such applications through the stores so it's perfect Thank couldn't you. agree with you more <laughs> we, we we need to move away from the government telling exactly. us what to do which they're doing a lot right now <laughs> and letting us the people tell us what to do uh, yeah. Thank you. For, where, where are you at? Uh, I'm in Penza, in my hometown in Russia. It's like a little town in Russia. Normally I'm in LA, but I'm stuck here a little bit <laughs> until they open borders. So. Uh, well, thank you, Nika. Like one, one of the things you really highlighted there was the preservation of truth, you know, and it's really hard to find the truth these days. And, and yeah, thank you. And so with anyone else, like if you could ask your, any of your ancestors questions, what would it be? What do you really want to know about them? So um, something that my institute did during quarantine was start the grandparent project, which anyone here is welcome to be part of. Uh, but we had a set of 30 questions that you were meant to ask grandparents in 30 to 60 minutes. And we actually exchanged to other people's grandparents. Uh, to have this kind of drop in depth of conversation. And um, yeah, so I have a whole list of questions if you want, but there are things are around the things that you wouldn't normally talk about. Like when was the first time you felt shame and, th and things like that. But um, this project and the discussion like Nika brought up is really um, helping to heal the human myopic vision because we are often pegged to a certain framework, which is, you know, roughly 70 years of a human lifetime and, and we don't really have perspective out of there. So where can we learn from our own species um, in a whole new way as our surroundings change so quickly? Um, so I think that it's, it's powerful there. And then the other thing that I have to say about it is that um, you can make a really nice tech stack here. Um, I don't know if anyone knows my friend Genevieve in Canada doing smart contracts for dead people, but there are certain other interfaces that you could um, plug into really easily in this kind of flow and um, make the whole end of life experience much more exciting than it is currently today. So yeah, thank you. Wow, thank you. Let's connect. <laughs> I have a I have a feedback uh, question for you guys. This is so cool and. Actually, Andy, I, I totally know who you're referring to about the dead smart contracts. Um, it's fascinating. I've talked to her about it quite a lot too. But I was wondering what one thing that springs to mind first and foremost is the relationship between um, indigenous um, communities. And I'm coming at this actually from the Māori or Kukanan Māori Polynesian perspective. Um, where we have actually had the luxury, unlike say the Aboriginal um, situation of being able to retain more knowledge um, from the elders. But I'm interested to know, throw, throwing it open to you for feedback on which indigenous communities have kind of been more receptive to this or like what you've seen most, um, I guess, impact um, shown from, from the, diverging indigenous groups that do exist yeah yeah so um i've been spending uh the last few years i've been spending a lot of time in central america and in, in guatemala and costa rica also in mexico um, i know vishal is in mexico right now and um we have a, a nonprofit organization that i'm on the board of and um we are called the wisdom weavers and so basically our goal is to kind of um <clears throat> There, there's a big festival that's supposed to be happening in December uh, called the Global Eclipse Festival. Um, you may have heard of it before. It was a good one in Oregon last couple of years ago. Um, and there's a big group going down to Patagonia in December. And so to see the uh, Global Eclipse. 
Um, the intention of this nonprofit is to uh, team up with a number of different um, amazing uh, live music performers and, and then community activist organizations and actually do interviews with these um, elders and wisdom keepers and indigenous tribes. And, and I've seen a lot of them coming out and, get, and into gatherings and really voicing um, their, their, their messages and, and sharing their wisdom and, and really stepping up and using technology. And I've seen, been seeing it more and more people of, of, of tribes and indigenous people, people of, you know, villages way out in the Amazon are looking to, into their phones and sharing their voices with the world. And it's going to be happening more and more because that's what the world needs right now is people to share their voices so that we are heard. And it's not, we're not just hearing information from the mainstream media because you know, who owns those. Jonathan, can you post your uh, email just in case people want to reach out to you? Yeah, for sure. So something interesting there with um, the indigenous perspectives is that in addition to healing, just like humanity's myopia of one lifetime, um, a lot of indigenous knowledge is inconceivable through the Western mind. And so in bringing technology as an interface to interpret it, that it's actually exciting. I've been a proponent of preserving indigenous knowledge for about 15 years a master's of science in ethnobotany which is a tenet of anthropology and so this concept of bringing technology um, there is one that's very touchy i mean you hear stories of um, untouched tribes who you know have missionaries drop uh, 2d images of friendly faces to them in order to do a bit of peace and uh, the missionaries then see the 2D image, which is the first 2D image, or the, the indigenous people see the 2D image, which is the first 2D image that they've ever seen in their life. And they look behind it and look for a soul and there's no soul there. So they stab the photo thinking that it's something um, that's not good in general. So, so also with that said, interfacing technology to people who are fully only existing in the non-silicone world is, is something that yeah, it's a, it's a tight, tight rope to walk. What a, what a realization that even if we were given the knowledge from some of these indigenous tribes, we wouldn't know how to perceive it. Like, I would love to know how we can change that so that we can perceive that. Um, so important. I mean, that, that, <laughs> that has to do with a complete inventory of your mental perception of reality and uh, widening that. But that, that complete overhaul is possible. It just takes a lot of um, abnormal, kind of beyond the comfort zone experiences. Let's do it. Maybe, maybe electric shock therapy would work. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. I think that's what mushrooms are for. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, wow. Awesome. What did yeah. you say, Jonathan? Where did I study? When did you st start this project? Oh, um, it's been it's been about eight months, and um, and yeah, we've we've really been just in the process of of researching, researching the market, looking at other technologies that are out there. We're also looking at the technology um, as far as on the AI and the machine learning side and natural language processing, and looking at different companies, how people are using. NLP uh, to be able to, you know, uh, leverage uh, people's voice. Um, there's, there's companies who are actually, you know, out there using, um, I, I don't know if you've heard of, um, is it, is it Sidekick? Is it techno? Oh, no, no, Deep, Deep Fake. Have you heard of Deep, Deep Fake technology? Yeah, so like, you can, you can put, you know, the face of, you know, you can put your own face on Arnold Schwarzenegger and Terminator 2 and the whole movie would be your face and your voice, you know, and like, so, so this technology is like starting to, to, um, you know, be out there and the, the sky's the limit, you know, that we can, we can go as deep as we can fathom, you know, and, and, um, and, but the, but this is really a point, I, I really believe that this is a point of singularity where it's like, there's that potential of, of, of achieving what many would call digital immortality, you know, where your, your identity, your voice, your message lives on beyond your, your physical existence. And that's kind of like the big crazy, you know, that's like the crazy idea, but I think that this is pro possibly the most ethical use of AI technology that we could, you know, that we could, um, 
apply to, to real humanity, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm curious also on, on just the topic of ethics, you know. Um, one of the questions that we asked in our survey is, would you use an app that could, you know, create like a digital version of yourself? And a lot of people like, were like, whoa, like that's kind of a red flag in a lot of scenarios. And I'm curious what you all think about that. Is this something that you would, you know, you utilize if it existed? My question is whether or not it's other, meaning is that actually the person that I'm communicating with? Am I supposed to see that as something other, like that is just an extension of that person? Like what is it, what is this natural intelligence that we're communicating with as a shadow, as an essence, as a consciousness, whatever it is, like what is it? Um, and is it real, you know? Something tells me there's something very real about it and very natural, but what is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right think, now right now it's not real, it's a simulation, but I think the ethical question is a good one. Uh it's kind of like uh, I'm okay to have all my financial data on my phone. I'm not okay for uh Apple to have all my financial data. So it's the same thing. I'd be perfectly fine with a digital version of myself that I could use, but I wouldn't want the state to control it. We talked about the state. Well, <laughs> what about when the state decides this is, so now it's, this is Jonathan giving a talk, but no, no, it's Jonathan telling us, make sure you stay in your house. Don't talk to anybody. Just don't do anything. Don't even eat. Um, and uh, so I want to know, I want to know that Jonathan's controlling his Jonathan avatar. Yeah, good point. And I think that that's one of the biggest things here is like to create that we've been exploring the idea of like, should this be open source? Should it be something that's voted on, you know, by people? And like, how should it be used? Because I mean, I think that the version one of this concept is really just a video playback app. You know, it's like you share your stories, and then you can like Siri, like, hey, grandma, you know, what was, you know, a time that you, you know, succeeded in life, and then it plays that video, um, you know, and, and so it's, it's really just a fun and interactive tool, but, you know, who, who knows, you know, in the next 10 years, how advanced technology will become and, and, and different ways we can apply it to these ideas. Yeah, and just so you know, we are really passionate about decentralized technologies, giving you like um, an, an identity where you control exactly who gets access to your information. And so for sure, we're here to do it the right way. Okay, wait, so I have an example that literally just happened like an hour ago, I was making pesto and my mother doesn't cook at all. And I asked her if, if I should put onions in pesto. And she apologized to me and said, I have no idea. I'm sorry, your grandmother isn't here to help you. And, uh, wow. and so me being the special child that I am, I was just like, grandma, am I supposed to put the onions in pesto? And then I felt into it and I was like, no, definitely not. And, uh, but like cool. if your product were available, what it could be is it could be like an inventory of all the recipes she's ever made. And it would be more or less a factual answer to this hypothetical, ridiculous question. Like there are more ways to connect or to collect really data more than the stories that they tell, because obviously stories are told about us and through us through data. Completely. 100%. And That's I'm digging awesome. Dave's background. <laughs> My background is the avatar that we're actually building. So, so if you think yours is crazy, I'm I'm building robotic humanoids that allow you to teleport anywhere onto the planet and be able to do anything and also to bring anyone to you. So, Jonathan, wow. you're you're you're, uh, you're you're definitely uh, grounded. This is what I'm literally doing. Awesome. Terry, will you share your contact info? Yes, yeah, so I, I posted it a couple times. Uh, I'll post it again. Yeah, I would love, to, would love to connect with you all. I put my Facebook page here. I would love to connect with you there. Um, and then also my WhatsApp and email. 
is there and yeah would absolutely love to stay connected with you all um and uh and definitely if you have any insights um harry would love to have a conversation with you andy you as well thank you both so much for just your insights um so cool to, to hear that other people are, are tapping into this and um yeah any anyone else uh, want to share You have the perfect time slot because there's no other talk coming up. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. I, I, cool. have, I have to say oh. that I liked your talk of the most the entire day. What? Wow. That was the best. You're just saying that. You're just saying that because we're in this room. <laughs> anyway, I, I, <laughs> that was the best. Appreciate it. That's alignment right there. That is just beautiful alignment. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, so this this background I'm in now, this is the Library of Alexandria, right? And you all you all have heard that story of how it burned down, and it's 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 very you know like controversial. But um, one of the original names, the the name that we're using now is Evercast. And, and the idea is that it's e like Everlast, right? Like Everlast, um, but Evercast, like a podcast. Um, and and uh, But the original name that we were playing with was Akash.io. And the idea was that we wanted to create the, the cosmic Akash, the Akashic records in the palm of your hand as an app. Um, and, and I'm curious, would you guys like uh, Evercast or Akashio? Evercast, because no one's going to spell the other one. I, I like Akashio, but I have a feeling that there's probably something else behind that, a different set, set of energy right. that you can tap into and um, ultimately sculpt or discover out of thin air as you're doing with what you're doing now. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> that was deep. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Awesome. Where, where in the world are you all? Where's everyone at? I'm in Hawaii. So cool. Los Angeles. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm still in Guatemala, Jonathan. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm in San Francisco. Vishal's in Tulum, right? Tulum, Mexico. Yeah. Cool. Um, oh, you know, I'm going to send you guys um, this link here. It, it is a, um, a survey. And if you feel like, you know, it's, it's basically about this concept. Um, and if you feel like going in there and sharing your ideas, would love to get your feedback. And um, yeah, definitely excited to just stay connected with you all. And if there's not any other things that we want to talk about, we could, we could wrap it up. Well, I, I think there's lots we could talk about, but, but, but we don't want to keep you. Cool. Um, Harry, I'm really curious, just going back to your, um, your platform and your technology. Um, uh, so is there overlap the, from what we've presented so far? Well, so, so there's an area of which uh, one of our things is preservation and replay. So uh, through, uh, I am also, you know, dealt with VR and AR for, and volumetric capture forever. But through these robots, because you're gonna be interacting as if uh, you are that person, because you're stereographically hear seeing, stereographically hearing, and you have hands. Once you do that, your consciousness actually shifts into the robot. Um, it's a, uh, there are several forms of consciousness. I've written on this, which is people think, therefore, you know, I think therefore I am. That, that's the consciousness of being conscious. Your awareness and the reason you think you're in your body is because of your senses. And if I can move your senses into something else, um, uh, you become that other thing. It's the reason a movie works. It's the reason why you start crying and yelling at the screen because you know, the, even just visually in a flat screen, your consciousness is shifted into that environment. And now you you think it's real, you know it's not real, but you are, are, are crying and laughing and all kinds of other things. That's right. because of that conscious shift. 
in an avatar, it's, it's, it's extreme. It's, it's a true out of body experience. If once you've ever experienced it, cause you're now seeing, if you see in here and then when you move your hand, so you're going like, you quickly forget that that's not your hand. doesn't matter that it looks like a robot hand. It doesn't matter because I went like this and the robot went like this and I'm looking, I'm turning my head. And so it's a much better way of preserving your consciousness in the sense of you could later on, like one of the analogies I give is, is two, one for an Alzheimer's person. Another one is, is imagine your, ba your granddaughter or your, your daughter's being born, but you're not there because you're stuck in the U S and your daughter's being born in China. And so you, uh, you avatar in and you get to see the birth and you pick up the child and you can, cause you can feel through haptics and you experience that. Well, later on your child could re-experience what you experienced so when she's about to have a baby. Wow. Uh, she could literally experience what, what you went through or at the wedding or at the christening or whatever else that you wanted to, to capture. Very cool. So yeah, there's a big overlap in that sense. Cause a big part of our thing is, is about uh, capturing your life experiences and then being able to, to relive them. You can also scrub them so you could share scrub versions uh, as, as well as you just relive your own life experiences. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting how there's, yeah, that, that kind of um, connection between, I love what you said about how like the moment you embody that technology, it's like you bridge the gap. Um, to the technology and you forget that you're separate from it. And it's almost like being reborn into a new body, right? Um, and, and yeah, this is, this is the time and age that we're in right now where we are going to experience different types of consciousness shifts, whether it's that heroic dose of mushrooms or some other, you know, engineered molecule that unlocks different parts of our awareness. And we start to, you know, remember who we are in, in different, um, in, in different states of, of the idea. Um, and also different ways that we can experience, you know, quantum leaps in our connection with technology and, and, um, and singularity. And I think that it's just going to give us more of a capacity to experience life in, in different ways. And I'm, I'm pro technology, I'm pro AI. Um, and I, I think that there is, um, you know, the, it's important to have those topics of like the ethical use of these things. And then there's also like the practical use of these things, you know, like what you're talking about with this, you know, having a robot, like that's going to be a very unique custom target audience of people who can afford their own robot. Um, you know, and, and, but then there's like this, you know, who knows, you could take it into gaming, you could take it into so many you, different, but, but you don't, you don't own, you don't own the 777 that you get in. Um, you're actually just renting a small seat. Okay. In it. So okay. these will be very affordable because you can scale them. And, and you can imagine them in, uh, in every Hilton and every Marriott and, and every retirement home and every mall and every museum. Oh, and you don't, you don't have to own it. Later on, you'll want to own it because you'll <laughs> put the price down to say $40,000 so you can bring anyone to you. Um, but before then, uh, it'll be a system that you can uh, you rent. And it'll, it's cool. actually far cheaper, far cheaper to rent one of these robots even even if it costs a million dollars to build one, uh, than it is to to buy an airplane ticket, buy a hotel room, buy all the meals and and and, and that Uber ride. Uh, the, compared to that cost, it's it'll be super cheap. The other thing I want to talk about for consciousness, because you you talk about consciousness, is keep in mind that through an avatar, you can have one pilot, and you can have as many passengers as you want. So you literally could experience life. Uh, in, in a situation of what it is that I'm doing. Nice. In yeah, real that's, cool. that's cool. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's giving you the ability to actually have a, a, a sensory experience and experience that neural synaptic, uh, you know, potential or that, that, that physiological experience, which will then, you know, give people the ability to, yeah, like, learn things better you know you could put on your headset and you're you're you know it's like being this in this uh experience and and actually witness your experience and then learn from that yeah i could completely in fact there's a lot of conscious experiments i intend to do and just so you know 
this is not uh, for the audience here is it's not science fiction. Um, we actually already have, even in our point one version, I, I, I've already proven my main point, which is general purpose. So I have a robot already that can, can pick up a dumbbell and do curls, can pick up a pitcher and pour a glass of water and bring it to you, can pull a tissue out of a tissue box, can pack a bag and bring that over to somebody, uh, can pick up tools like a drill and use it and drill a hole. The point is, is it wasn't built to do those things. It was built to be a human. And so you can do those things. It's so cool. And that's already done. I can, I've already demonstrated that last month. Um, wow. And we're, when I say the 10% version of what I'm building for the first phase. Very cool. Yeah. Um, at this point, you know, we're, we're in the phase of just, um, you know, we've, we've put together our, our deck and we're starting to work on our basic website and, and kind of, you know, design our, our questions and, you know, get clear on, on, on exactly what that, that MVP is going to look like. Um, but I, I would be, I would be so excited if, if we could meet. Well, your partner's here. By some, on, you know, what would be the most effective. What's that? Uh, where's your partner in Mexico? Where's he at? Yeah, Vishal's in, in, in Tulum. All right. Well, I, I'd rather I'm just Tulum, Mexico, and global though. He's no, no, no. But see, I'd rather go and visit you in Tulum, and then we could go. Uh, yeah. Or <laughs> or come to Hawaii. Uh, either Not way. Hawaii. Yeah. And <laughs> that, that's way better. Uh, though I I do know that this is also a a destination site. So, well, three of us live in the destination mall location. Yeah. Love it. No, I kind of feel I'm living in Nazi Germany right now. So. Oh my God! Don't get me started. <laughs> they they now they now want to to only wear a mask when you're walking on an empty deserted street or on a beach where there isn't another soul for miles. <laughs> I I object to this because one I actually work on a COVID team for USC and UCLA and the brain mapping uh, group. Uh, two. I mean, I am at the highest level of science. I have a doctorate in physics, a second doctorate in chemistry. And when I hear these politicians tell me they're making decisions based on science, and yet I know what the actual science is, I'm going like, you're making decisions based on something else. I think it's called fascist Nazis principles, but I don't know. That's, that's what I think it is. Wow. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a red pill person myself, so um, I know exactly what you're talking about. And here in Hawaii, the reason I came to Hawaii was because of all the places I've seen people getting arrested for surfing all over the world. And Hawaii is the one place that nobody has gotten arrested for surfing and they're allowing surfing. So yeah, I have a lot of friends who've been arrested, so they're going right back out because, uh, look, you need to lock down, as you're talking about the elders, no one should be allowed to go into the elder facilities. Uh, they should be locked down. But who got it right? Florida got it right. New York mandated COVID people be into elderly facilities. They mandated it from the governor. You know, you must take the COVID people. This was not in February or March. This was in April. <laughs> so, so uh, but, but I can't go to the beach and I can't surf because it's, I, I did figure out the solution. Though. So tell all your friends, the reason is COVID-19 did not come from China came from sea monsters. <laughs> you can't go to the beach because sea monsters are spreading the virus. So if you go to the beach, it's very dangerous. What a world we live in. Well, hopefully, you know, with events like this, we're bringing together, you know, the high high vibe conscious creators and, and we're, we're creating the new system. And that's the great thing is that like, eventually we just won't even need to participate in their narrative anymore because we're gonna, we're already, we're too busy having our own narrative and creating our own reality. And so we, we, we have the choice to be able to give it power and we have the choice to be able to, yeah, create our own reality. And that's, that's what we're doing um, as much as we can. Hopefully soon we'll have, you know, AI robots that we can, you know, live vicariously through so that we can like go into the front lines and not have to worry about, you know, like going, going to, yeah, getting in trouble. No, robots. My robots are controlled by real intelligence. You don't need AI. Nice. <laughs> so, well, it's lovely talking to you all. Uh, I have a feeling we can just spend the whole 
day chatting. But you guys have my info, um, yeah. uh, Jonathan, so I will email you. Uh, I put mine up here as well. Awesome, Anybody I got it. Who's welcome to reach out as well. So, well, awesome. well I, I, yeah. actually have, I have to get to my next meeting. <laughs> cool, nice to meet you, Harry. Thanks for being here, Staria Mahuni. Thanks for being here. Uh, Omar, nice to see you. George, hope you all are doing well. Sending you lots of good vibes and aloha from here in Hawaii. Vishal, thank you, brother, for uh, all that we get to do on this collaboration and excited to see you all in the future. <laughs> Blessings. Cool. Let's wrap it. All right, you guys ready for this? On three. Three, two, one. Oh.